The 22 Immutable Laws of Marketing, by Al Rise, and Jack Trout. Summary Notes High Level Thoughts The quintessential marketing book, always worth referring back to, yet to be outdone in its straightforward usefulness. There are laws of nature, so why shouldn't there be laws of marketing? Numerous business leaders have recommended this book as the Bible of marketing. Ultimately, marketing is about distilling a distinctive promise to the consumer and then promoting it aggressively. This book is mainly about the distinctive promise and its distillation. It talks about the kinds of campaigns that this leads to, but it isn't a how-to book for doing your first city-wide outdoor advertising campaign. There are lots of other books out there that do that, but, be warned, Many of them fall into the frequent traps the tries warns us about. For my money, this is a book well worth heeding. Summary Notes Law Number 1 It's better to be first than it is to be better. It's much easier to get into the mind first than to try to convince someone you have a better product than the one that did get there first. One reason the first brand tends to maintain its leadership is that the name often becomes generic. Xerox, the first plain paper copier became the name for all plain paper copiers. People will stand in front of a Rick or a Sharp or a Kodak machine and say, how do I make a Xerox copy? They will ask for the Kleenex when the box clearly says Scott. They will offer you a Coke when all they have is Pepsi Cola. Regardless of reality, people perceive the first product into the mind as superior. Marketing is a battle of perceptions, not products. Law number two. If you can't be first in a category, set up a new category to be first in. When you launch a new product, the first question to ask yourself is not how is this new product better than the competition, but first what? In other words, what category is this new product first in? Everyone's interested in what's new. Few people are interested in what's better. Law number three. It's better to be first in the mind than first in the marketplace. Being first in the mind is everything in marketing. Being first in the marketplace is important only to the extent that it allows you to get in the mind first. The single most wasteful thing you can do in marketing is try to change your mind. Law number four. Marketing is not a battle of products, it's a battle of perception. All that exists in the world of marketing are perceptions in the minds of the customer or prospect. The perception is the reality. Everything else is an illusion. Law number five, the most powerful concept is owning a word in the prospect's mind. The essence of marketing is narrowing the focus. You become stronger when you reduce the scope of your operations. You can't stand for something if you chase after everything. Law number six. Two companies cannot own the same word in the prospect's head. Law number seven. Your strategy is determined by where you are on the ladder. The Navis did the one thing you have to do to make progress inside the mind of the prospect. They acknowledge their position on the ladder. Avis is only number two in rent a cars. So why go with us? We try harder. The ladder is a simple, but powerful, analogy that can help you deal with the critical issues in marketing. Before starting any marketing program, ask yourself the following questions. Where are we on the ladder in the prospect's mind? Law number eight, in the long run, every market becomes a two-horse race. We repeat. The customer believes that marketing is a battle of products. It's this kind of thinking that keeps the two brands on top. They must be the best, they're the leaders. Law number nine. If you're shooting for second place, your strategy is determined by the leader. Much like a wrestler uses his opponent's strength against him, a company should leverage the leader's strength into a weakness. Law number ten. Over time. A category will divide and become two or more categories. Law number 11, marketing effects take place over an extended period of time. Law number 12, there's an irresistible pressure to extend the equity of a brand, line extension. Invariably, the leader in any category is the brand that is not line extended. Take baby food, for example. Gerbo has 72% of the market, way ahead of Beech Nut and Heinz the two line extended brands. Law number 13. You have to give up something to get something, sacrifice. If you want to be successful today, you should give something up. Law number 14. For every attribute, there is an opposite. 
effective attribute. You must find your own word to own. You must seek out another attribute. It's much better to search for an opposite attribute that will allow you to play off against the leader. The key word here is opposite. Similar won't do. Law number 15, when you admit a negative, the prospect will give you a positive. So it may come as a surprise to you that one of the most effective ways to get into a prospect's mind is to first admit a negative and then twist it into a positive. What should Listerine do? It certainly couldn't tell people that Listerine's taste wasn't all that bad. That would raise a red flag that would reinforce a negative perception. Things could get worse. Instead, Listerine brilliantly invoked the law of candor, the taste you hate twice a day. Law number 16. In each situation, only one move will produce substantial results, singularity. Most often there is only one place where a competitor is vulnerable, and that place should be the focus of the entire invading force. Law number 17, unless you write your competitor's plan, you cannot predict the future, unpredictability. Implicit in most marketing plans is an assumption about the future. Yet marketing plans based on what will happen in the future are usually wrong. With hundreds of computers and an army of meteorologists, no one can predict the weather three days in advance. So how do you expect to predict your market three years in advance? No one can predict the future with any degree of certainty. Nor should marketing plans try to. Law number 18. Success often leads to arrogance, and arrogance leads to failure. Ego is the enemy of successful marketing. Objectivity is what's needed. Law number 19, failure is to be expected and accepted. Too many companies try to fix things rather than drop things. Let's reorganize to save the situation is their way of life. If you learn something and you're trying something, then you probably get credit for it. But woe to the person who makes the same mistake twice. Law number 20. The situation is often the opposite of how it appears in the press. When things are going well, a company doesn't need the hype. When you need the hype, it usually means you're in trouble. Law number 21. Successful programs are not built on fads, but trends. Here's the paradox. If you were faced with a rapidly rising business, with all the characteristics of a fad, the best thing you could do would be to dampen the fad. By dampening the fad, you stretch the fad out and it becomes more like a trend. Law number 22. Without adequate funding, an idea won't get off the ground. You'll get further with a mediocre idea and a million dollars than with a great idea alone. Mm -hmm.